Cocky Boy is an elderly galah or rose-breasted cockatoo that outlived his previous owners. He was very ill when he came to me, but he's okay now. He's reached the age of 64. And while he's got osteoarthritis and a heart condition, he lives in a disabled setup and is doing quite well. Initially, I became aware he was having issues with his balance because he kept grabbing the front of his cage and readjusting himself. So I set up a camera and started to monitor him to work out what he could and couldn't cope with and found that even getting around or turning around in his cage, he'd struggle and almost fall. The reason I used the camera initially was to work out what areas of his cage he used the most and which parts of it he could cope with. That way I'd know where he was most likely to poo so I could work out where to place platforms to help him. I found that he wasn't even coping with the most basic sort of food bowl that was clipped in. He'd get to it okay, eventually, and get the food out, but he wouldn't be able to hold on to the food. He'd drop it and miss out, and it would just basically sit in the bottom of the cage where he'd never go. So aside from checking out what he could do in the cage, I checked out what he could do out of the cage as well, and how he could walk and move around. Because thinking platforms, I wanted to make sure he'd cope with them too. Unlike a normal Gala, he walks with his beak down, so it was important that any new environment that I gave him would be uncluttered. I used raw untreated pine to create the platforms initially, with some basic angled brackets that I screwed in with stainless steel screws. I cut them to the size of the cage and left a gap in the front right hand corner where he usually slept because I'd know that was where he would be most likely to poo. So I placed a grill under the perch that I put in that area. I used branch cutters to cut off any sharp parts of the branches and put it all together so that the perches would sit on top of the platforms. The reason I did this was to prevent any foot injuries because he still needed to perch. I used ferret ramps to help him get from one level of the cage to another by attaching them to the wall with cable ties. I attached the platforms to the wall via cable ties as well by hooking them through the angled brackets onto any horizontal bars that were available. This worked quite well for a number of years but became very hard to clean so I began to look more closely at ferret cages for more ideas. I got rid of the wooden platforms and changed them for wire grills and went and bought some matte ceramic tiles, matte because they don't get as cold as shiny ones, and they just sit in on top of the wire grills. The wire grills are also attached with cable ties, although you could use shelving brackets by cable tying them to the actual platform and putting them in. I'll show pictures of that a bit later. This has worked remarkably well for Coffee Boy. You can see that I've attached perches via cable ties to the base of the ramp to help him get up onto it. The cage has two doors, so I've effectively split it into two levels. The bottom half is used for catching waste, the upper half is the part he lives in. Cable ties attached to horizontal bars. Just be careful that you have one cable tie going to an upper horizontal bar and one to a lower. So in this case the yellow is the upper, the white is the lower. That stops the platform from moving up and down as he walks on it. The ceramic tiles themselves aren't actually attached in with anything, they just sit on top of the grills so quite easy to pull out and clean. I just wash them in the sink with a pet safe disinfectant called F10 that I buy from my vet. You can cut tiles to fit the cage which leaves you gaps where you need them so that waste can fall through. Heat is extremely important for a sick or an elderly bird. This is an Exoterra glow lamp with a 60 watt ceramic globe. Cocky Boy chewed on the stand that actually attaches it into the cage, which was a bit of a problem for me. So I came up with a somewhat creative way to stop him getting to it by cable tying a food bowl over the end of the stand. It's important you put the heat lamp on the outside of the cage because the globe gets extremely hot and the bird will burn themselves if you don't. So you can just see there how I've attached it. Now what I was saying before about cutting the ceramic tiles to size, you can see the gaps I've got for where his poo falls through or whether I basically push any rubbish down. There's a hole underneath the ramp there where I can push any grass waste down to the lower level. I have the water bowl on a grill as well so that if he sloshes he doesn't get himself wet. In that corner there, near the orange perch, is where I put his pressure mattress. Pressure mattress is made either of a bag of rice or a bag of seed and shoved into a pillowcase and put near the heat lamp for him to sleep on. It stops any pressure sores developing. That's probably the latest change I've had to make. 
that and the padded perches. I pre-cut perches and cover them in vet wrap in order to make them soft and easy for him to use. You simply drill a hole in the end of your perch and use one of these screws slash bolts. And what's vet wrap? Vet wrap is basically a vet bandage, self adhesive, it grips to itself, it's fairly plastic or rubbery in texture. You can see it holds back to itself quite easily without actually being sticky. General adhesive bandages that you can get on the market could be toxic if the birds start to eat it because you're dealing with glue. This, the actual texture, grips on. You can see that. Comes in a lot of different colours. Um, it goes by a few names too. Most commonly known as Vet Wrap, Rip Wrap, Premi Grip. There are a couple of the other names that you'll find it under, but different size rolls. This standard roll is about $6 from Australian dollars, that is, from the vet. Um, you buy it on eBay. Generally, any vet should stock something like this. Basically, I use a simple perch screw. One end is screw, one end is bolt. This is a carpentry style of screw. So if you go to a hardware store, it should be wherever they're putting their furniture supplies. So to bolt table legs onto tables, that kind of thing. And a couple of washers. Generally, easiest idea is get your branch, cut it to the size you want. This is just a bit of lily pilly branch. And start from one end. You can wrap in a simple sheet of felt to make it extra cushioned if you want. So literally wrap that around. Do that part quite tightly so it doesn't slide under the bird's feet. Get your vet wrap. Start from one end and then just go on it and pull tight to start with. The looser you do it, the more textured you finish. The advantage of doing that is it will be easier for the bird to grip it at the end. So unravel it a bit first and then loosely wrap it around and it will grip itself and you just run your hands along to get it to the texture you want. It's not completely waterproof so if you do get this wet, especially with felt underneath it, it will take a substantial amount of time to dry. But it does protect it enough to make it easy to sponge clean if you need to from the bird. If you do it without the felt, you'll find you still get a slight softening, but not quite as soft. So that's actually a lot firmer to touch, but it's not as abrasive on the skin. So you can still help yourself prevent some pressure wounds by doing that. And one I prepared earlier. I like this one because it's got some smaller branches that come off the sides. The advantage of that is that when you actually place it on a flat surface, it won't rock back and forth. Drill a hole in the end to start with. Your best bet is actually to take your screw and measure how thick it is and find a drill bit the exact same width. That will hold it in firmly. I like to do it a little bit wider than the actual screw because that way it just pulls in and out so I can easily replace it as I need to. But basically your screw will just screw back into the hole and get to that point. Put a washer on, put it through the cage bars, put your other washer on and screw into place. So what I mean by a slightly bigger hole, I'll just don't screw that, I should be able to pull it out. It's a little bit of an effort, but easy to reuse on a different perch then. But if you've got one of those parrots that will undo everything you do, probably not a good idea. Yeah, so easy enough to clean with a warm sponge. Dries fairly quickly unless you've got felt in it. If you've got felt in it, it's going to take a while. I also have a heat box that I keep set up for health emergencies when Cocky Boy has a hard episode. It's basically a reptile box with a thermostat and that sort of perch will just sit in the bottom and he can spend the day in there when he's really sick. An alternative to that screw-in style perch is to use a bracket, just drill it in, shove a bolt through and you can attach it to the cage quite easily. Cocky Boy's setup is very different from the other galahs. 
but he does get his out of cage time too on the same sort of platforms and stands that they play with which makes up for it. Now I promised a different way of attaching the platforms and these are powder coated shelving brackets buy from any hardware store held in place by nuts and bolts so you could easily cable tie that to a wire rack and that's Peppy Maya Collectors that's a veranda what they called a veranda that I bought off eBay so yeah there are other ways of doing this I can easily see cable tying that to a rack all right I hope this helps you it certainly helped cocky boy he's a lot more stable than he used to be and yeah any questions Put them in the comments.